Uh, you know, I was never officially asked to join the Blues Club, but the the, the evolution of it, I guess, was me arriving in Melbourne from country Victoria. I grew up in Malmesbury, it's a little town in central Victoria on the, on the Calder Highway, and, uh, and I, I became a blues fan, and I was, I was just crazy about uh, blues guitar, and I, I, I devoured every uh, piece of blues music I could get my hands on. Uh, and I got good enough, I guess, that I, I felt I could get up with a band anywhere and hold my own. Probably had a bit of a chip on my shoulders when I first you know, sort of decided to. I chucked my job in and arrived in in Melbourne just with the the electric guitar and about forty dollars in my pocket. And uh, and I was just determined I was I was going to get a job as a musician, you know, um, uh, and have a future in music rather than you know, just slogging it out in a factory, which is what I was doing. Uh, and everyone told me, I'd started going out playing gigs with uh, Just Blues, which is a little band I formed with a guy called Steve Sepro, harmonica player, uh, a bass player called Travis Clark, who was about 16 years old at the time, he was amazing, uh, and uh, Mark Grundon, who's a drummer from Malakuta, so he was another country boy, and he's, he still plays around the scene, he's great too, but that, that was our, our little blues outfit. and. Uh, we played for, I don't know, 18 months, maybe a couple of years around the scene. We used to do a, a residency at the Swan Hotel. It was a $5 cover charge, and I used to make about $80, maybe $90. Uh, that's what we'd get each for that gig. And I lived on that. That's, that was my, you know, basically my wage. But I was, I was living in a big house in Eltham, and we had about eight people, uh, all artists, you know, singers, musicians, and uh, so the rent was maybe 20 bucks <laughs> each. Uh, so, um, so I was doing okay, it, it wasn't looking like a, a, uh, uh, an actual career, but I was calling it that, and, and everyone was telling me, any time we do a gig, you really need to go and see Dutch Tilders. You, you, you're into the blues, you play okay, but you really need to go and see Dutch Tilders. And to my eternal shame, I'd never heard of him. I didn't know who he was. Uh, the, the only, uh, the thing that drew me to Melbourne was uh, a group called Blues on the Boil. So I looked him up and I wound up going to these Blues on the Boil gigs, which was a group that was uh, led by a guy called Bob Sedegrain. And Bob's, uh, he's a jazz cat. Uh, and a piano player, and just amazing. And I, I had a jazz background, so I really, I really dug where he was coming from. Uh, and the whole band, and it's it like they were all, all jazz cats, but playing blues, you know, getting, getting back to the roots, and, uh, and really twisting it, and bending it, and, and, and I loved it. And I became such a regular there, that uh, I struck up a conversation with, uh, with, with, with the guys in the break, and uh, I remember Gordon, Pendleton, the, the, uh, the drummer, uh, you know, asking me questions and it just turned out, you know, I told him I played the guitar and he's like, man, you play? Man, you've got to bring your axe. Bring your axe next time, we'll get you up and play. And that, that was sort of the spirit of it, you know, and, and uh, so I, I think I was, you know, biting my nails all week, <laughs> but really keen to get back there and, and uh, you know, take my guitar along and see if they'd let me get up and play, which they did, you know, and, and so that became a, a regular thing. That turned into the Just Blues uh, band. Uh, Steve Sepro was the, the harmonica player that I met, and he used to come along and get, get up and jam with Blues on the Boil as well. So that's a little side story. So everyone's talking about this Dutch Tilders guy I've got to go and see. Uh, and I thought they were talking about another, you know, another young cat like me, you know, playing the guitar. And so there's a little, probably a little part of me, you know, rebelling against this idea that, well, you know, there's, you know, someone better than me. I don't know, I don't know if I want to go and see him, you know. So I turn up, I go to the Windsor Castle on a Monday night, and I walk in there, and uh, Dutch picked up his noise semi-acoustic, and he played 
couple of solo tunes, and uh, and my jaw just hit the floor. I, I knew within four bars I was in the presence of a master. You know? This this guy was the he was the real thing. I'd listened to a lot of blues on records, but I hadn't to that point experienced anything quite like you know, Dutch Tullers, you know, playing that finger style guitar with that big voice and just the, the confidence and the charisma just putting that, that song out there. Um, uh, within yeah, just a, a, a minute, I, think, I turned to my girlfriend at the time and I said, I don't know how, but I have got to get to know that man. And so that became my religious uh, sort of experience once a week, going to the Windsor Castle and watching Dutch uh, with the band. Uh, so he'd start off solo and then he'd bring the band on and then there was usually a, a, a few people getting up to sit in, usually in the second set. Uh, and as I understand it, that's how the Windsor Castle gig began. It, it, was, it was Dutch's solo gig on a Monday night. But being a Monday night, a lot of the musicians had the night off, you know, didn't have a gig. So if anybody was in town, uh, any of his mates in the industry, that's where you'd go. You'd go down to Windsor Castle and see Dutch players. So the way Dutch uh, explained it, you know, he'd see buddies from the industry and he'd, he'd get them up to, to play. And so it kind of turned into a bit of a bit of a jam session as well. And uh, by his description of it, Dutch said, you know, he, he picked the cream <laughs> of the crop and and formed his band, the Blues Club, out of it. And, uh, and, and I guess the Windsor Castle was almost like, you know, this, this paid rehearsal. You know, this is where he could, he could whip the band into shape as well before he went out and, and uh, did gigs. So at the time I arrived, he, we had uh, Barry Hills on bass. A guy called Peter Townsend was playing drums, and Martin Cooper was playing guitar, and that was that was the blues club that I first saw, and uh, and uh, just amazing, just incredible. And and so as a young musician, it was it was a real uh, uh, it was a real lesson in how to play this blues music, and, uh, and I was I was just lapping it up. I didn't say boo to anybody uh, for. Uh, probably a period of months. I was just going along and I'd just find my little corner. And I, I, I didn't even drink back then. I used to get a beer so it would look good and I'd just sit with that one <laughs> beer all night. And uh, uh, then I'd, but I'd just be focused totally on the music. You know, I'd just lap up everything and then I'd go home. I'd get home about one o'clock in the morning or whatever and first thing I'd do is pull the guitar out of the case and I'd just play practice until I fell asleep. Uh, I guess just the fact that I was there all the time eventually I became a familiar face, people started to, start to talk, talk to me and I, I can't remember exactly how it happened, there were probably people that recognised me from this residency I was doing at the Swan Hotel, a couple other gigs I was doing and uh, you know I seem to remember, you know, maybe someone coming up and saying, hey, are you getting up to jam? Did you bring your guitar and all that sort of stuff? And so that leads to, to uh, you know, maybe someone getting in Dutch's ear and saying, hey, you know, that guy over there, he can play okay. Uh, I, I, knowing my personality, especially at the time, I just would have been too scared to, to go up and say anything to him. But uh, however it happened, eventually I wound up getting up to play and we just had this musical thing uh, between me and Dutch and, and you get this between musicians sometimes. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But we just had this musical sort of chemistry. I, I was a good listener and I had listened to his music so much that I felt like I, I knew exactly where he was coming from. And I, I don't think I was the best guitar player uh, the Dutch knew, but I was probably one of those rare players that Dutch really liked who could play around the vocals. So I gave him space. I could play licks, but I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't play unless I felt it was the right time. You know, so it's not. 
you know, there's a lot of other other players out there that could run rings around me so far as you know their, their, their ability. But I really worked with his vocals yeah. and really tried to, to you know complement what he was yeah. singing about. And and Dutch really liked that. You know that was that was one thing that you know I, I guess I had to uh, to my advantage. You know. Um, so when Martin Cooper decided to move on, uh, initially I got a phone call asking if I'd come and fill in for, for a gig, because Martin wasn't going to be there for this particular gig. And that happened a few times, it was a bit of a transition period, where Martin was doing some gigs, but not all gigs, and, uh, and then he was doing less and less <laughs> of these dates. But I was never actually asked to join the band, and I, I remember, I, I, see I had my other uh, little project that I I was trying to keep happening, which was this Just Blues band, uh, which was sort of evolving in its own direction. I think we'd actually gone in and recorded a demo somewhere, and uh, I bailed up Dutch and Barry at the Musicians Club one night and, and said, listen man, I just got to know, am, am I actually in the band or whatever? And I remember you know, Dutch turning to Barry in his way and said, oh, well, Barry, what do you think? <laughs> And so from then on, uh, yeah, that was that was my gig. You know, I, I could feel confident that any time there was a, a blues club uh, gig, that you know, that, I, that was my gig as well. And so I played with him for the next, uh, I guess, six years. You know, from about ni 1989 through to through to maybe early '96. You know.